What is going on guys? For this month, I'm going to post a build guide that is centered around having the same performance or better than the PS4. About a month ago, I have posted a similar build but the only difference is the price point. I will get to that later on. Last time I checked on Lazada, it cost for about $16,995 but for convenience sake, let's round that off to $17,000. The prices that I have listed down here is mainly from Dynacos PC and no, this is not a paid video. And some prices are from Lazada. I will explain why later on. That being said, let the build guide begin. Now for the CPU, I have picked the Pentium G3258. Well, originally I was going to go with the Athlon X4860K, but I don't know what sorcery happened to the Philippines that I can't find that shit locally. I could never find that CPU on any big name store online in the Philippines, though I have found one in Lazada but it cost way more than it should. But nonetheless, I will leave a link down below in the description box in case you want to check it out. Now going back to the Pentium G3258, it is not the best processor out there, but it is a viable chip and will suit your needs for gaming. But just take note that there are some games that will utilize 4 cores instead of 2. But you don't need to worry since the majority of games nowadays will still run on a dual core CPU. The motherboard that I have chosen for this build is the Gigabyte H81M. It is not the best motherboard out there but of course regarding our price point that's the solid choice we have right now. Of course the specs doesn't look good on paper but it gets the job done even though it's a very basic M80X motherboard. For the GPU you have the GTX 750Ti from Palit. I really love this GPU because 1. I owned one before, number 2 because it's power efficient and 3. it's on par with the graphics that you see on a PS4. If you will be gaming on a 1080p monitor then this will be the absolute best pick for the price. It has 2 gigs of GDDR5 which again is enough for 1080p. Now this is not the most beast like card out on the market but this will make you play games on a playable frame rate. I won't be mentioning any benchmarks for this card but you could look it up on YouTube because this card is actually really popular. Now a lot of YouTubers upload their benchmarks on this one and there is a whole channel dedicated for the GTX 750 Ti and its performance. Onto the RAM you have your Kingston HyperX DDR3 1866MHz. Now this will set you back around 1800 pesos on Lazada and I have left a link down below if anyone is interested. Going back it has 1866MHz of frequency but it will be downscaled to 1600 MHz due to motherboard compatibility. Now this is not something to worry about since RAM frequency isn't that much of a factor in gaming. For storage you have 1TB of Western Digital Caviar Blue and that is enough for gaming especially if you want to play on AAA titles which will cost you about 4 gigabytes per game. For the case, I have chosen the Techware Mono which comes with a 600 watt power supply. Now the power supply that this case comes in is by far not one of those 80 plus certified but it will get the job done. Considering that our GPU only has a TDP of 60 watts and doesn't require a single 6 pin or a single 8 pin power connector like you just directly install it in your PCI Express slot and your CPU isn't also rated at a higher TDP. For the case itself, it's kinda old school having a top mounted PSU. But the good thing is, is that it comes with a cable management space to tuck in all your wires and considering the price point, I could really never complain for that kind of feature. So that's it for this video. Leave a like if you liked it, leave a dislike if you didn't like it, and comment down below if you have any more questions. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button.